Uh, hello everyone. So in this video, I am going to show you how we can use the uh, web version of Multisim in Android device. Right? So I have this Android device, and I am using this Google Chrome browser. So let's search, search here Multisim Multisim web. I search here, and you have to. Okay, so the first first one you have to click. Okay, so this is the website. So here, sign up for free. Option is there. Even if you have an account, you have to first click here. So, see, this is the form that you have to fill up to create an account. So this alias, alias is basically uh, what you say. This is something like username. This should be a unique name. Then we have to use the first name, last name, and role. So you have to use student. So if you give student, then it will ask you the year of passing. So you have to apply the the school, the name of the school, or you can apply. You can use the name of your college or university. And you have to give the expected date of your graduation, like month and year. Right? So you can fill up this form and proceed. So you have to set a password here. So since I already have an account, so I will go for login. So once you create the account, you have to verify your email address, um, just like any other. So I will log in using my credentials, my email address and password. So I have added my user and password. I click login. Okay, so I have to add this once again. The password I have to put one once again. So after I enter the password for the second time, I visit this place. So here, uh, what I do, I click here, and you can see I have these options. If you already have a circuit. Uh, then you can access it by clicking this My Circuits menu, or maybe Public Circuits. You can explore this yourself and see what uh, we can get by clicking each of these available options. So Public Circuits actually many circuits are available, and if you make a circuit here, there will also be a public circuit because you know. Uh, when we make a pub circuit, it becomes a public circuit because this is a free account. And when you have a paid account, then only you can make a private circuit. That means which cannot be seen by others. So let's create a circuit first. But again, this this will not come in the top list until until it gets uh, many ratings. So since you will be designing some simple circuits, so you will not get much ratings, and that will not be shown. In the public list. So again, this will take some time to load the simulator. It depends about the net network speed also. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is we have to rename this. The default name is Untitled Circuit. So from that we name it. Let's say we we will make a uh, maybe high low pass filter. Okay. Let's make a low pass filter. LPF. LPF one. Okay. So we will make a first order low pass filter. Then we have this option save. So before uh, leaving the website, we have to save this, right? Okay. So we will make an active low pass filter. So for that, we will need time. So you can see here all the options are available here. So if you touch this uh, register, you will get all the passive components like resistor, capacitor, inductor, potentiometer, fuse. So we will need op amp so i click here so we have two op amps here uh, one is three terminal op amp and one is five terminal op amp uh, we have the ideal comparator we have the triple five timer and this is multiple op amps so let's make this five terminal op amp and see okay so see we have to drag this very delicately right very delicately have to drag 
and you can zoom out just like any other let's like a photo we can zoom in or zoom out so what i do is i put this open at the center of the sheet okay now i will need the biasing filters so i click here so there are all the sources available so i click dc filters now i gently drag it here then we have these options for these options available so this is the option for removing cutting then we have the option for copying so this is the option for copying so we will need another footage so i just copy here I click this and we have another footage source okay so what i do is i connect them so i zoom in so for connecting i have to touch this and touch this okay it is connected uh, then i have i will need the ground so i touch this and touch this connected then we have to okay so here you can adjust the voltage actually by sliding this we can adjust the voltage so let's leave it at 12 volt Uh, then I touch here and here connected uh, then I touch here so this I don't see the beard then I touch here okay it's connected so we can also adjust this slightly by dragging the wires okay so you can see we can zoom out to see the full circuit so here how it, here how it looks like now because we have connected the biases okay so then we have to make the negative feedback because basically we will need an amplifier part negative feedback for that we will need two registers so this is a register I drag it and place it here so you have to do it very delicately right because if you do it fast then it will just go away and very difficult to manage okay so then i have to connect this so let's zoom in we have to touch exactly at the connector then only it works okay okay so, so i just did a mistake here i just dragged it and it went far away so this is what i was talking about so you have to be very careful while dragging this again we can drag it back to its place Okay, so we have dragged it back to its back to its place, its place. Then I have to connect them here, this one and this one connected. Uh, then I have to connect this with here connected. So this is our circuit. We have the negative feedback part. Uh, then we will need the ground. If you by mistake if you do something you can just remove it like this then I connect this with this okay okay now we will okay, so we have done the amplifier part and now the main filter uh, for that we will since we are making an LPF dopus filter so there will be one there will be one capacitor and one register right so this is the register and there will be one capacitor so I rotate it I can rotate the capacitor like this okay so I connect this terminal with this, this with this. Just like it is easier than this space actually. Just because of this mobile, it is difficult. You can also do it. Okay, so we will need one source. 
so we need ac voltage source so this is the voltage source okay so here is the voltage source so what i do is i connect this terminal with this and this with the ground okay so it's uh, voltage is one volt and frequency is one kilohertz and for this capacitor we have this the value of the capacitance is one microfarad right so we can change this by dragging this but i will leave it one microfarad because when we have one uh, one uh, one kilo ohm and one microfarad that means the cutoff frequency is around 1.6 kilohertz and our input is one kilohertz so that means we are in the pass band right let's slightly reduce the frequency so if i click this frequency this will appear so what we can do is we can reduce this let's make it 500 hertz 550 hertz okay so it is around 500 hertz and we are ready to go so now what i have to do here so this is the full circuit by zooming out you can see the full circuit now what i have to do is i have to set the see uh, there are many kinds of simulation and there is something called interactive simulation but for this mobile device it is difficult to work with the interactive simulation so we will go for transient analysis in transient analysis we can see the waveform so since our frequency is around 500 hertz so our time period will be around 2 microsecond 2 millisecond so let's make this let's do this for 10 10 millisecond let's do this 10 millisecond from 0 second to 0 millisecond to 10 millisecond so we have all the options available but i'm not going to do all these things and okay so before we run the simulation we have to put a because here we don't need a load resistance in p space we always need the load resistance but here we don't need here we what we need is we have to use the voltage level okay so again i think i have done some mistake see this mobile is very difficult because if you touch something by mistake it just goes very far away again you have to bring it back okay so i brought it back now what i need is i need a i need this folders this is the terminal or probe So I have to bring it to place. Even with practice you will be expert. I am not a very expert in this because I don't like using such softwares in mobile. So before we run the simulation we must save it, right? Because if we do some mistake then it may go away. So I click here and I save. We must save it as public, we cannot save it as private because if we select private then this will show this error. The private circuits are only available for premium accounts, that means the paid accounts. So we have to close it, private, and we have to give some description like a first order. Active. LPF so again this takes some time to upload or because this will not be saved in your mobile this will be saved in the server that means internet so you have you will always require internet connection to use this tool so I run this So the simulating.
okay you can see here so we have done the simulation from 1 millisecond to 10 millisecond and although we are in the pass band but since this is a uh, low pass filter or first order low pass filter it is a very large uh, transient band so we cannot actually get a very good result because our input was 1 volt and we are getting around 600 millivolt so the gain of the amplifier is already 2 because it is the feedback resistance and the load resistance both are 1 so it is already 2 ok so I have this document and item right so in this way we can see this So this is the result of tangent analysis. Okay, so now by clicking the diode icon, you can go back to the circuit. By clicking this diode icon, you can go back to the circuit. Now, since this is a uh, filter, so it is always go good to go for a AC shift. So again, unlike AC shift, we will go for. So again, I have to set the AC shift. So AC uh, since our uh, cutoff frequency is around 1.6 kilohertz, so let's do the AC shift from uh, so from say 50 hertz to let's say 10 kilohertz. Then E3 means 10 to the power 3, 10 into 10 to the power 3. Okay, so we have done this. So now we run this. Again, it will take some time. So you can see we have the response. So you can see one is magnitude and one is phase. So normally we only look at the magnitude, but it is also showing the phase. How the phase is changing with frequency. So from 500 hertz to so you can see the so we are actually we are seeing the transition band. So if we want to if you want a higher like resolution then we have to start at the lower frequency so we can always do this actually so let's start it at 10 hertz if we start at 10 hertz and again run the simulation So now we can see that this is the this is how the how the wave look like right this is how the frequency response look like so again I save this so you can go back it is saved successfully so never click the back button until it is saved successfully right so after this we can go to my circuits and see this circuit is available here so you can access this circuit so anytime you make a circuit please make sure that you save the circuit otherwise it will be lost thank you